Okay, so if you've been following along the series, you've heard me talk about Cloud DLP and all the ways that it can help you inspect your data and de-identify it with a whole bunch of different techniques. We talked about the concepts and we saw some code, but if you're wondering what DLP looks like from a pointy clicky perspective, stick around for this extended episode where I'll show you some DLP functionality from the Google Cloud Console. So for this demonstration, we're gonna do a few things. What we have is a GCS bucket with a few files. I'm gonna show you how to create an inspect template and then kick off an inspection job that's gonna tell us which files might have some sensitive information in them. Then after that, I'll show you how to create a de-identification template and then use that to create an identical data set in BigQuery with encryption applied to some sensitive fields. Okay, so before we start, let me just show you real quick what we're working with. So have a GCS bucket, some data. And in that bucket, we just got some text files, CSV files. Some of them have sensitive values, some of them don't. Like for example, uh, we have sample S10 has some phone numbers, while S20 has names and social security numbers. So, it's a mixed bag. We got full names, we have social security numbers, we've got phone numbers. So what we're gonna start with is a DLP inspection template. Let's get rid of this guy. So creating a template here is pretty simple. You go to the data loss prevention page, create template, and here you'll choose either an inspect template or a de-identify template. We'll go for inspect for now. Okay, let's call it our bucket inspect template. Uh, bucket. All right, hit continue. And now here's the part where we choose what info types we actually want to inspect for. So I'm just gonna go for, since we saw that, we saw social security numbers and Let's add phone number. Boom, added, done. And then here we choose the confidence threshold or likelihood. So it can go, again, it can go from very unlikely to very likely. We'll just hit possible right in the middle, hit create. Give that a second. All right, so here's our inspection template. And here are the two info types that we're looking for, the likelihood right there. So now that we have that template, we can go over here, back to the DDoS prevention page, and we can now create a job or a job trigger. All right, um, so the cool thing about DLP is that you can make it inspect on a, on a schedule. So we'll call this our weekly inspection. And what we're gonna inspect, it's gonna be Google Cloud Storage. And you can see that you can also do BigQuery or Cloud Data Store. All right, and what with our bucket name, uh, sample data, DLP. Okay. All right, and here, we scroll down a little bit. You can actually choose to use sampling. So we're not gonna use sampling for this example, but if you had a very large data set, you might wanna use sampling because the more files that it scans for, the longer that job is gonna take and the more resources it's gonna take up. So, and then when you do choose to use sampling, you can always adjust it here, whether you wanna sample 50% or 20% or 100%, which wouldn't make sense, but 100%. But for our purposes, we're gonna say no sampling. Here, you can also choose the files that you wanna limit your inspection to. We'll just leave it at all for now and hit continue. And now we choose our template. We only have one template, so it's gonna auto-populate our, our list of the templates that we have. And there it is, our bucket inspect. And here are the details. Again, here are our two info types and the likelihood of possible. So for each job, uh, aside from just a template, you can also add some info types here. But again, the more info types you look for, the longer that job is gonna take. So what I'm gonna do is just deselect any additional info types. So we have nothing. We'll leave the likelihood again as possible. Hit continue. 
And now here are the actions that you want your job to take after it's done. So we're gonna click here, save the BigQuery, and I'll show you why that's important in a second. But all right, our project, a DLP demo. Our data set is bucket inspects. So I created these data sets ahead of time in BigQuery. So before you do this, you would want to do that yourself, create your own uh, data set and then also uh, an empty table. Inspect. And there are other actions that you can add to each job, like publish to PubSub or notify by email. But for now, we'll just go to BigQuery, hit continue. And here you can choose when you want it to to, to run. So you can run daily, weekly, or custom. So we'll keep it at weekly, hit continue. And then it's gonna give us a recap of our job configuration in the JSON objects. Scroll down past that. We're gonna hit create and we're gonna confirm. So now it's creating that trigger. Since it's a weekly one, it's not running yet. So we just hit here, run now, boom. And they're running trigger weekly inspection. So an inspection job could take some time and that depends basically on how big your data set is or how many info types you specified in that template. All right, so if you wanna see how that job went, you wanna go back to the data loss prevention page and under inspect jobs, there it is, click that. And this is pretty much a recap page of how the job went. So you'll see that it found 52 findings. 52 findings were found in your data and 44 of them were phone numbers and eight of them were social security numbers. So there's not much more information on this page than that. If you want more information about each of the findings that it made, you want to see what it threw out into BigQuery. So these are all the fields associated with each finding that it made in your data. So I'll show you a quick query. We're going to select the file name which should be here, relative path. And we want to include, what else? Uh, info type and likelihood. Hit run. And there you go. So it's not just the file has sensitive values, values in it and it made an entry in a database. It actually made an entry for each finding that it made. So for example, you'll see that sample S08 is here a few times because it has a few phone numbers. And you have the option of including the actual value of that data, but I didn't enable that for this uh, example. But you can see how how much sensitive data a file might have, rather than just whether or not it does have that sensitive information in it. An inspection job is a great way to find out if your data might have any sensitive value in it. Now, let's create a de-identification template and see what we could do with that. Okay, so before we create a de-identification template, just want to show you something real quick. Since we're going to use tokenization uh, to de-identify information under cryptographic keys, I'll show you that I've created a key ring that I named DLP key ring and a key that I named DLP key. And we're going to use that in a second. So let's jump back to data loss prevention. Once again, we're going to go up here, create template. This time, instead of inspect, de-identify, we'll call this bucket DID. And this is our bucket de-identification template. Great. Uh, continue. And here we'll pick a transformation rule. And there are some familiar faces in here. We see redaction, replacement, replace of info type. Down here are our three tokenization methods. Uh, we're going to choose cryptographic deterministic token. Down here, we're going to paste in that key information, the resource name uh, as a path. And here it's going to want a wrap key. So it's pretty much going to want a key that's been encrypted by that encryption key. And I'll show you how I generate that real quick down here. Uh, we'll open up our cloud shell terminal and we're going to set this variable to open SSL random base 64, 16 characters, boom. And then here's what that looks like, right? So we're going to take that. We'll take off any spaces and we're going to pipe that into gcloud kms encrypt and then we're going to give it our 
key ring and our key information. So location was global. Key ring was DLP key ring, right? Uh, our key, DLP key. And we're gonna specify plain text file, which is actually gonna be the, the value that we piped into this command. And then we're gonna specify a ciphertext file, which is the output that we want it to go to. So ciphertext, right? Hit enter. And what we got now is a file that has some ciphertext. So we can't paste that in here. So let's encode it to base64. Hold on, let's clear that up. Base64 no wrapping and ciphertext. All right, so let's take this guy, carefully select it, put it on our clipboard, paste it over here, and boom, there it is. All right, so let's get rid of this and continue on with the template. So with surrogate info type, this is, again, this is the value that's gonna prepend in front of the uh, encryption encrypted values. So since we're only gonna look for social security numbers, I'll just make it SSN. And we're gonna specify the info type down here. Manage info types. Okay, there it is, US social security number. And again, you can choose up to 150, but for now, social security number is fine. And we'll hit create. So the cool thing about the DID templates, you can go over here to test it out to make sure everything's cool, everything's working. So a social security number is three digits, two digits and four digits. And that is an example of what it's gonna look like when it's transformed. And there's our surrogate value right here. So to demonstrate the identification in action, what I'm gonna do is create a data flow job, which is gonna take our CSV files from our bucket and then make uh, the identified version of that same data in BigQuery. So to create a data flow job, let's head over here to the navigation menu, scroll down data flow, create job from template. So job name, let's just call it buckets, the identification, DID for short. And under data flow template, we're going to choose data masking slash tokenization from cloud storage to BigQuery using cloud DLP. And now we want to specify that bucket that I showed you earlier. It was sample data DLP and we want to target the CSV files that are in there. So I don't know if you noticed before, but there was a data set in BigQuery that was called bucket DID, totally empty, no tables or anything. This will create the tables for it for us and our project ID DLP demo. And the template name, which is on my clipboard, temporary location, it's gonna be in the same bucket slash temp. Great. All right, let's look this over. So now what's happening is that Dataflow is going through all, all of those CSV files in our bucket and then creating a, an identical data set in BigQuery with those values de-identified using tokenization. So once Dataflow is done doing its thing, here's what it's gonna look like in BigQuery. So here's our data set, bucket DID. And now in that data set, there's a table for each CSV file that was in that bucket that I showed you earlier. So if you remember before, we looked at sample S20 that had a bunch of names and social security numbers. Let's query that table and see what we get. And boom, there it is. Just like before, we've got names, social security number, and some other data. But now the social security numbers are completely unrecognizable because they've been encrypted with the key that we specified in the de-identification template. So now this data is essentially safe to use for any analytic workflows that might exist in your organization. And that's it. That was just a quick taste of what Cloud DLP is capable of doing. But if you have your own stories of how Cloud DLP has helped you secure your data, feel free to share that in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.